Tonight we celebrate the relentless presence of love. Love, unconditional and perfect. Love born in the world again and again. Love ready to heal and forgive and unite across all differences and divides. Love being born in each of us and offering itself to all. Love that will not give up. Love that cannot stop making room for you. Here, in this ancient story, told and retold across centuries and cultures, a tale of people seeking shelter from the cold after a long journey. People met by kindness in the silent night. Whoever you are, whatever the state of your heart, weary, wild, filled with wonder, the call to rejoice rings out for us all to be held in this hope that love is not done with this work, in this life, in this world. This love, newborn, is just getting started. So let us kindle once again the light of hope and celebrate Christmas once more. Come, let us worship together. Welcome to the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria for our Christmas Eve service online on 2020. 
I'm the Reverend Jennifer Innes, and it is my privilege and pleasure to serve with this congregation as its minister. It is my joy to be with you here, sharing stories of old, benefiting from sources of Unitarian Universalists far and wide that make this Christmas Eve a reality. I want to thank especially, to begin with, my colleagues, the Reverend Gretchen Haley and Kendall Gibbons, for their beginning words tonight. This year, this year, there are no homemade cookies or hot chocolate to sample in Fellowship Hall. There are no warm hugs or handshakes, no towering tree in the sanctuary. This year, we must make Christmas out of the materials at hand. But that does not mean we are alone. We are, in fact, gathered here to defy the isolation and the darkness that gnaws at us all the time, coronavirus or no. We are here to bear witness that community endures, even when the Grinch has hijacked all the presents. Because we are here for each other because of the memories of Christmas Eve's past and the promise of Christmas Eve's yet to come. This one is different and special, but it does not exist alone, just as we do not exist alone. It is part of a sequence of the cycling years, and we remember, and we create anew the heart-lifting illumination of Christmas Eve. We find ways to make music, ways to make meaning, ways to make merry, ways to make magic, together while we are apart, so that we might not needlessly risk each other's lives and add more burdens to our overwhelmed healthcare systems. Christmas Eve has always been about the birth of love that overcomes loneliness and oppression both. About the light of hope in the midnight of despair, about ancient promises that finally, unexpectedly come true, and a song of peace in the world, of violence and strife. This, my friends, is no time to give up on those proclamations. Christmas Eve, as always, is an invitation to double down on a strange and wonderful vision. That vision we all seem to have tucked away somewhere in our practical workaday hearts. That this life that we live in this world that we share could suddenly bloom into peace on earth and goodwill to all people now on this very night. Or, if not that, at least, at least the heavens might blaze with stars and ring with angelic song. And we, we might all remember that somewhere, a child is being born, which means that this, without a doubt, is a holy night. Come, my friends, let us kindle our lights and pass them heart to heart, if not hand to hand. Let us lift our voices with the familiar songs of rejoicing for the coming of a new guide, a new teacher, a prince of peace who shall save the lost and bring light to the nations. Even now, the flame rises and the song brightens. Hark, let us listen. Hi, we're the Fisher family. I'm Aiden and that's Ava. We see the holy fire flaming. This night, far above the manger cradle, it signifies hope, 
and promise to lift against the darkness of the night. May there have been in other centuries who have been guardians of this flame. Now it is our watch. Come apostles, come great hearts, come builders, carry the sacred flame to make the light the windows of the world. It is our watch now. Bethlehem. And then the baby was born. The shepherds came first. And after them came the kings. When the last king had left, the scent of frankincense lingered in the air. We all slept, and the man had a dream a dream of danger. He woke long before the sun rose and told the woman. She took the baby and kissed him. She smelled his sweet baby breath and felt his soft, warm baby skin and how his lashes tickled her cheek as he sleepily nuzzled her neck. Time to go, she said. Then they wrapped him up warm and kissed him again, and the man came to get me. He patted me between the ears and led me out. Come on, old friend, we're off on a journey again. And we left some gold for the innkeeper, for he had been good to us when others had not. And we set off. And under starlight, through empty streets while people were sleeping, hoping for the kindness of strangers. We journeyed again. And we passed the shepherds in the fields and there were whispered blessings and the movement of sheep in the darkness and the clasp of rough hands 
and the love of the warm hearts. And I kept walking, carrying my precious load. And the woman held the baby close to her heart. And she and the man talked about journeys and dreams and warnings and the love of a baby and the kindness of strangers. And when we rested and they were frightened, they took hope from each other and from the baby's tiny first smile. And we entered into Egypt. And we found refuge. The end. Dearer to God. 
God are the prayers of the poor. Brightest and best of the sons of the morning, dawn on our darkness and lend us thy name. Star of the east, horizon of the morning, guide where our infant Redeemer is laid. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 12. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy 
which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Hi, I'm Ibogen, and now, in the spirit of Christmas Eve, please follow along and join in singing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old. From angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth to all good will from heaven the news we bring. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled. And still the heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and lonely plains, they bend on hovering wings. And ever o'er its babble sounds, the blessed angels sing. But with the woes of war and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angels' strain have rolled two thousand years of wrong. And we who fight the wars hear not the love song which they bring. Oh, hush the noise of battle strife, and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on, by prophet bards foretold, when with the ever encircling years comes round the age of gold, when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling. And the whole world give back the song which now the angels sing. Hi, I'm Amy Fisher, and I'm going to read you a verse from Luke. And suddenly there was with an angel of multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. And the shepherds said one to another, let us now go on to Bethlehem and see this thing which will come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made it known abroad, saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all that they heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds.
Our lesson is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare. This reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 7 through 11. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
This reading comes from the Reverend Howard Thurman, an African-American educator, minister, and advocate for nonviolence. The Work of Christmas When the song of angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. Each night a child is born, is a holy night, a time of singing, a time of wondering, a time of worshiping. Each night a child is born, is a holy night. For so the children come, and so they have been coming. Always in the same way they come, born in the care of loving parents. Each night a child is born, is a holy night. A time of singing, a time of wondering. A time of worshiping. Each night a child is born is a holy night. No angels heard their beginnings. No prophets predict their future courses. No wise men see a star to show where to find the babe that will save humankind. Each night a child is born, is a holy night. A time of singing, a time of wondering, a time of worshiping. Each night a child is born, is a holy night. Yet each night a child is born, is a holy night. Fathers and mothers sitting beside their children's cribs feel glory in the sight of a new life beginning. They ask, where and how will this new life end? Each night a child is born is a holy night, a time of singing, a time of wondering, a time of worshiping. Each night a child is born, is a holy night. On this night, we share old scripture that spoke to people long past of a need for a new life in the world, one that would bring a message of joy, and a reminder of the vastness of the holy that spoke to the listeners of that day about their life in their empire that governed so much and the possibility of a new way for people to live in justice and in peace. On this night, we tell the new scripture as well as the old. The texts of our current lifetimes we share that remind us of our struggles with loneliness and with oppression, of how each new child is a new variable and something to anticipate within our human existence. So amid the ancient and the modern texts that are revisited every year, I am drawn back 
to a year ago, to last Christmas. So one year ago, in December, I was sharing Christmas Eve with my family and co-leading the service with my spouse, the Reverend Patrick Price, in Geneva, Illinois. And I was also preparing to send my name to congregations looking for a minister. You were celebrating Christmas here in this sanctuary with the choir and a pageant and candlelight and carols sung together. And the search team was ready and eager to receive the names of prospective ministers. And just after the new year, just about one year ago, the search team and I would encounter each other for the first time by name and by ministry. But before that moment, before we learned of each other, we all were waiting and watching and wondering what this next year would bring. This night and this season is our first as minister and congregation. And so much has gone well. We have found each other. And we determined that the combination of your vision and my vocation would be better together than separate. And our combined skill and imagination and determination have made it possible to begin this new adventure. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. And your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. And at the same time, so much has not gone to plan. Christmas for me is about recognizing the hardship of the journey as much as it is about the joy and the possibilities. No one could have predicted how much this would be a year in the wilderness and a wondering of how to find safety again that reliable refuges of being with a neighbor in the pews or in coffee hour would become unsafe. That in order to preserve ourselves and each other as a beloved community, we would need to stay away as completely as possible. In this time, I see the story of this past year reflected in so much of the Christmas story as well. Like Joseph, we have been people coming together, trying to do the next right thing and the next right thing and the next right thing. We are like Mary, knowing that something wonderful is about to begin, is emerging, is being born. And like the shepherds and the wise people, we are people from all manner of places and experiences of life, all matter of diversity of economy and race and experience and heritage and education. And, and we are all gathering and seeking. And we are also offering the gifts that we have all are valuable. You and I have been traveling by day and by night for a long while. In the larger course of our respective histories, this congregation has endured so many challenges and so many questions, different locations, different ministries, births and deaths and entrances and departures. In 178 years of existence amid the flow of life 
and in the service of the larger hope that is universalism, and now Unitarian universalism. You bring all this into this time, in this place, in this moment. And I bring my own Unitarian Universalism and the encounter with all the text, ancient and modern. Sophia Faz is as familiar to me as the Bible. So I say to you, and perhaps to myself as well, let us trust in our collective wisdom. Let us trust in the faith of a strong community and the desire to return again and again to this circle of love in whatever form that may be. With our collective wisdom, we can embrace also what is coming, what is new. As Faz reminds us, each night a child is born is a holy night. There is something new under the moon and under the sun with each new life, with each new promise, with each new commitment. And we encounter each other anew, slower than expected, but we encounter each other anew whenever I see somebody in person and you see me. And the newness of that is going to linger in a way that's a little different because of how we're gradually seeing each other. And I invite you to embrace that. Let us remain in the new, because there is only one first year here. And not rush this process of meeting and learning and dreaming. Because I am here, and so are you. And we are here together. For this first Christmas, let us savor what has been told and retold, hearing new traditions and hearing old traditions with new companions. And let us also embrace and take in at the pace that we we want to, every encounter, every opportunity, every discovery. I believe in that spirit of trusting what has been and taking in at our pace what is coming, that we may move forward into the new year with trust and hope that we then can enlarge our circle of love and have faith that we would enter into tomorrow and embrace all of the struggle that's to come, and all of this possibility together. Each night a child is born is a holy night. Let us embrace the birth of the new ministries that we are learning and creating and looking forward to together as we continue in our now joined service to the larger spirit of life and love and justice and hope. Amen. And now we pass the light. Each December during our Christmas Eve services, we turn the lights low as we light candles, as we pass the flame, one to another. We share our light with each other But this year, our ritual looks different, though the intent behind it remains the same. We believe that every single one of us is a light in the world. And we believe in shining our light on others, offering love and compassion to all. So friends, if you have a candle nearby, I invite you to light it and watch as I light the candles that represent all of us, the circle of our congregation, the circle of our community, amplifying and adding to the circle of this faith. Watch the circle of light as it grows. 
and imagine passing that light from yourself to your neighbor, to your friend, to your beloved. As each flame is kindled, imagine you are passing your light to another person at this congregation on one side and to someone who needs this light in their life on the other. There are more than enough lights for us all. Howard Thurman wrote, I will light candles this Christmas, candles of joy despite all the sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles of courage where fear is ever present, candles of peace for tempest-tossed days, candles of grace to ease heavy burdens, candles of love to inspire all my living. Candles that will burn all the year long. Our circle of light is complete. May your light, our light, shine. Hold on to your light as we share the carol, Silent Night. this flame, but not the light of Christmas, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. As we go forth, 
May we claim and reclaim our fierce powers as bearers of hope, celebrators of joy, champions of courage, advocates for peace, and nurturers of love. Deep in the night of Christmas, we discover new life in ourselves and in the world. Let us carry this new life into tomorrow as we rekindle this congregation's call, our human call, to embrace freedom, love wholeheartedly, grow spiritually, and do all that is in our power to help heal the world. Our worship is ended. Let our Christmas and the good work of Christmas begin. <laughs>